Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another online edition of services here in Angola United Methodist Church. First of all, I'd like to extend to you a happy 4th of July, such an exciting holiday and one of my favorites that we celebrate the freedoms that we have in this country. Um, also, I'd like to inform you, if you didn't already know, we also have in-person services, but I am very thankful to, that God allows us to have the technology to reach you across the screen. So let's pray and we'll get started today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We do thank you for the country of America and this weekend that we have to celebrate it. I uh, pray for all our government and all those in power that they make, make, may make the right decisions moving forward and for years to come. I also pray that you may bless this service and help us to get exactly what we need to out of it. Uh, nothing more and nothing less through the music and the sermon today. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Freedom. The power to determine our actions without restraint. Freedom is surveying all the options and deciding which one is best for you. Freedom is sleeping soundly every night while courageous men and women are awake and protecting us. Freedom is the ability to worship God whenever, wherever, Freedom is dreaming. Freedom is creating. Freedom is loving. Freedom is expressing any disagreement with any political party. Freedom is launching a business in the middle of fear and uncertainty. But the highest freedom we can ever receive was purchased on our behalf on a hill outside of Jerusalem. As Jesus freely offered himself for us, our shackles were broken and our chains were removed. His death became our life. His shame became our glory. And we have been set free to live, to love, and to serve people with clear and open hearts. So today we celebrate and we praise God for granting us this undeserved gift that invites us to become truly and completely free.
it is uh, good to be able to worship together. Uh, whether we're worshiping online or in person, uh, we were created to worship. We were created to um, connect with God and to connect with each other. I'm thankful to live in this country. I'm thankful uh, that we get to celebrate um, our freedom uh, over the 4th of July weekend. Uh, I hope that you've had time with uh, family and, and friends. Uh, I w would like for us to pray together. Uh, would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord God, we love you. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, to live here in the United States. Uh, we thank you, uh, God, uh, for the freedoms uh, that we have as a people. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give our leaders uh, wisdom and discernment in difficult times. Uh, Lord, may they do what is right in your sight. May they do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. And Lord, we pray uh, for a renewed sense of unity in our nation. Uh, God, may we love each other. Uh, may you bring renewal uh, to our nation. Uh, Lord, you know all the other needs of those who hear my voice, who are watching this uh, online service. God, I pray that you would meet each one at the point of their need. Now, Lord, teach us to pray as you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to read from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. This is from the NIV version. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Uh, do you have favorite verses from the Bible? I know that I do. Uh, I have verses that I pray I have verses that I claim. I have verses that give me hope, uh, that correct me. Uh, a lot of different verses from the Bible. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. My real life verse is... Uh, Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be yours as well. I also pray frequently, Romans 8.28, for we know that in all things God works together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. I, I know that you could say a lot of other uh, verses, uh, verses that are dear to your heart. But the verses that I would like to talk about today, I've already read in Scripture to you, but I love uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. In the New Living Translation, it reads this way, uh, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. What a powerful verse. That God is able to do more than we could ask or think. Uh, another version says, imagine. Uh, another version says, even dream. Um, I believe that this verse uh, teaches us uh, three th important things. Uh, one is this, that with God, more is available. With God, more is available. I love more. Uh, actually, when Debbie and I first started going to Sam's Club, I, I was in hog heaven. 
because uh, when I buy, I like to buy in bulk, and, and uh, a lot of it, we would buy things and we wouldn't use them up for a year. Uh, I like the idea of more, and I love the idea of more of the good things of God. God is able to do more than we could even ask, think, or imagine, or even dream. God is able to provide more strength, more grace, more healing, more provision, uh, more restoration, more reconciliation. God is able to do more. Now, not only is God able to do more, but God desires to do more in us, with us, and through us. Now, a second idea from this passage, from this verse, verse 20, is this. A key to experiencing the more that God has for us is found in our asking and our dreaming, our imagining, our thinking. We have not because we ask not, according to James uh, 4.2. I believe that, uh, brothers and sisters, there are things that God desires to do in each of our lives uh, that he wants to bring into our lives uh, that won't happen unless we ask. John Wesley was convinced that God could do nothing in the world apart from believing prayer. I am convinced that wherever and whenever God is at work, he is at work doing good things in our world because some saint has prayed someplace uh, for those things to happen. They have partnered with God in what is happening. A great prayer for us to pray as we think about God doing more in our lives is, Lord, rule and reign. I, I pray... That is my favorite prayer. Uh, God, rule and reign. Rule and reign in my life. Rule and reign in Debbie's life. Rule and reign in AUMC. Rule and reign in our grandkids' lives, our kids' lives. Rule and reign in our national situation. Uh, Lord, have your way. When we're asking God to rule and reign, we're really uh, praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're inviting God uh, to be be in uh, those situations, those circumstances, those people's lives that we're praying about. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Uh, actually, this verse and the verse 8 it makes it clear. It, it's talking about in the Greek uh, to keep on uh, asking, to keep on seeking, to keep on knocking, to be persistent in our prayers. Um, and I believe that as we're persistent in our prayers, that sometimes God refines those prayers. He shows us uh, how to zero in in prayer. So know this, that God desires to do more in our lives, and, and part of the more that he desires to do uh, will not happen unless we ask, unless we seek, unless we knock, unless we dream, uh, unless we imagine the good things that he wants to do. That leads to uh, the final point that I'd like to make, and that is this. God wants to work with us uh, to see his more realized in the world. In the middle of verse 20, it says this. I'm going to read again from the NIV. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. You see, God desires to co-partner with us in doing his thing in the world. He wants us to be his uh, co-laborers. It's actually why Adam and Eve were charged uh, with doing in the garden. Uh, God created the Garden of Eden. It was a beautiful place, uh, but uh, Adam and Eve uh, were given the responsibility of tending the garden, of stewarding the garden. And I believe that just as God desired to partner with Adam and Eve, God desires to partner 
with you and I. Je just as Jesus partnered with the disciples, God desires to partner with you and I in what he's doing in the world. This means, brothers and sisters, that as we pray, sometimes God will give us a holy nudge. Uh, uh, not just to pray, but to uh, go see someone, uh, to call somebody, uh, to get involved in uh, a ministry, uh, to get involved. Uh, I've had folks uh, that have really felt led to get involved in uh, government uh, or on the school board. Uh, you see, uh, God desires to partner with you and I, and he wants to accomplish his more uh, through you and I. We have the privilege of co-laboring with Jesus. Now, you may ask me, Pastor Tim, uh, you've been talking about this. Are there any examples? I want to give you two. One biblical, one um, from our generation. Uh, the first is this. Uh, do you remember that uh, the Apostle Paul started out as a persecutor of the church? His name was Saul. And um, he actually uh, gave consent and participated in, in the killing of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Uh, Stephen prayed uh, a prayer that was similar to Jesus' prayer, Lord, forgive them. Lord, forgive them. He, he prayed for his, uh, his folks that were killing him. And I believe that when he prayed that, he was praying for Paul, who was then Saul. In fact, I believe that one of the things that happened with Saul when he was on his way to Damascus uh, to persecute the church, I believe that, that the church in Damascus already knew that uh, uh, Saul was coming their way, and they were praying for Saul. And God did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they could ask or think in Paul's life. He... he turned Paul around. Paul became an apostle of the church, a leader of the church. He planted churches all over the Roman world. And, and he wrote about a, a third to, to a half of the New Testament from prison. You, you see, uh, I believe that, that those disciples in Damascus uh, or, and Stephen when he prayed had no idea what God could do with Paul. But God was able to do more than they could ask, think, imagine, or even dream. There's another story. This is a, of a lady who uh, had been married uh, for 17 years. Uh, but the last few years of her marriage uh, just were not good. It was a difficult time in her life. She asked for a divorce, and, uh, and they went ahead. Uh, her husband and, and this lady divorced. Uh, she had two uh, sons. And, uh, and then almost immediately uh, rebounded into a relationship with somebody in her church, and married that person within the year. That relationship didn't last. It, uh, it exploded or imploded uh, a few months after the marriage. And uh, this lady uh, then was single raising two boys. And uh, the boys were in high school uh, it was a difficult time for her, uh, a very difficult time. And, and she hoped to have the opportunity to love again, uh, but uh, nothing seemed to work out. She dated a little bit, and then uh, finally she decided, uh, Lord, if you want to bring somebody into my life, uh, that's fine. Uh, I, I'd love to have somebody, but, but if you don't have somebody for me, make me 
uh, content uh, where I'm at, at the stage of life I'm in. When she prayed that prayer, uh, not long afterward, uh, there was a, a man who uh, started uh, attending um, events where uh, this lady's gospel group was singing, uh, revivals and that sort of thing, and, and he just kept hanging around. Well, this lady uh, eventually started dating this guy, and they wound up getting married and uh, this lady instead of just having two uh, rascally uh, teenage sons wound up with uh, three other uh, sons three other daughter-in-laws and five grandchildren uh, God did more than uh, this lady could imagine she married a Christian guy he had been raised as a Nazarene pastor's son and uh, he had gone through a divorce too. He had experienced hurt as well. And God did exceedingly abundantly above all that she could ask or think. They've been married now uh, well over uh, almost uh, 35, 36 years. And, uh, and now... She has, in addition to the five grandchildren, uh, 17 great-grandchildren and uh, 15 grandchildren. God has added to her life immeasurably more than she could ask or think. I know the story well because the story is about my mom. So I know, brothers and sisters, that God is able to do more than we could ask or think as we partner with him in prayer, as we're willing to be obedient, it's amazing what God can do. God can cause things uh, that are awful in our lives to work out for good or at least bring good out of them. I don't know where your hurt is today, but I know that nothing is impossible with God. It may be impossible for us, but with God, all things are possible. And the Lord can redeem relationships. Uh, the Lord can help us out of financial messes. Uh, the Lord can break addictions. The Lord can take failures and uh, somehow help us to learn from those and, and, and turn us around. I do know this. Brothers and sisters, hear this today, that God is able to to do immeasurably more than we could ask or think, dream or imagine. Would you let me pray for you right now? Lord God, you know uh, what those who are uh, listening to me are facing today. Uh, God, you know where the hurts are. You know what seems impossible for them, whether it be in their family, uh, whether it be in their workplace, whether it be in our nation, God. I pray, Lord, that you would do immeasurably more in all of our lives, in, in our families, in our church, uh, than we could even ask or dream as we partner with you in prayer and as we co-labor with you. God, these things we ask in your name and for your sake. And all God's people said, amen.
remember, uh, my friends, that God has more for us. God desires to do more in our lives. Would you receive the benediction? Now may the God who is at work in our lives, may the God who desires more for each of us be with you. May he keep you. And may he make his sh face shine upon you and may he give you peace. May you experience the more that God has for you. More healing, more provision, uh, better relationships, reconciliation, forgiveness, new starts. May all of that uh, be yours in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.